The Nintendo Switch becomes the cool kid on the playground, Marvel's the gifted is back for round two, and the Animaniacs might just be on the loose once again. All these stories and more today, Lunar News Live. <sighs> Happy Friday, everybody. It's Friday, January 5th, and this is your New to Lose Live, the first one of 2018. Uh, this is your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I'm this week's guest host, back again, Mikey Petralia. Josh is out on vacation still, so I'm here to read the news and chew bubblegum, but my mom said I'm not allowed to chew bubblegum anymore because I keep swallowing it. It's just so delicious. Uh, so let's get into the news, shall we? Uh, 20 years ago, Two brothers and a sister were locked up in a water tower on the Warner Brothers movie lot, never to be seen again until now. That's right! Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, aka the Animaniacs, will be coming back to your television screens courtesy of uh, Hulu. In a press release from Warner Brothers this week, it was revealed that not only would the original library of Animaniacs and Tiny Toon Adventures now be available on Hulu, but also that Hulu ordered two brand new seasons of Animaniacs scheduled for release in 2020. No word yet on if all the original voice actors, voice actors will be coming back to reprise their original roles, but it was confirmed that it, uh, it wasn't just the three siblings coming back, but also America's two favorite lab rats, Pinky and the Brain, Ew. as well. Uh, we can't wait to see the new ways they'll try to take over the world or what modern day news or issues Animaniacs will poke some fun at, much like they did on the original series. Uh, which brings us to our question of the week. If you could see the Animaniacs poke fun at something today, uh, what would it be and why? Personally, I'd want to see them make fun of uh, Rick and Morty Uber fans because they're just the easiest thing to poke at. Uh, let us know what you come up with in the Facebook live chat right now, and we'll pick some of the best and most creative answers to receive a gift card uh, to the Loot Vault at the end of the show. Uh, so speaking of things enjoyable to kids and adults alike, move out of the way, Microsoft. Step aside, Sony. Uh, there's a new console kid in town. Uh, who everyone seemingly wants to be friends with. And uh, GameSpot reported this week that the Nintendo Switch is now the United States all-time fastest selling console through the last 10 months. It's a very yeah, small box. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo has sold 4.8 million Switch units in the US alone, which tops the record set by any previous home console in its first 10 months on the market. Additionally, Nintendo revealed that the sales of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild have hit at least 2.6 million units, and that uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which is great, which, lost, uh, which launched only at the end of October, is already at 2.8 million units sold. Nintendo has also said that they expect sales of the Switch to uh, top lifetime sales of the Wii U worldwide by the end of March. That's impressive. So, like, welcome to the Cool Kids Console Club, Nintendo. It's good to have you back again. Like, I'm so happy. Uh, <coughs> So uh, now listen up, space nerds. Well, not like all the space nerds, mostly the ones that are fans of Seth MacFarlane's love letter to Star Trek series, The Orville. Uh, they recently reported that Fox has renewed The Orville for a second season, and we assumed it'd be just another 12 episodes like the first, because he's got a lot to do. Interestingly enough, though, that Fox has decided to drop some good and bad news on The Orville fans yesterday. It was revealed that the second season of The Orville would have at least 14 episodes or more, uh, though likely not a typical 22. <clears throat> Orville, Orville producer and star uh, Seth MacFarlane commented that he'd much rather do fewer episodes uh, for the Orville and have them be better content-wise rather than do 22 and have a lot of them be filler. The bad news, however, is that the show will not be ready for its originally scheduled fall release and will likely, likely be starting back up closer to the end of the year. Seems like a decent compromise for fans of the show, uh, in our opinion, but the story doesn't stop there. Yesterday, another interesting and quite weird bit of Orville news was uh, revealed that the Orville may cross over with the show that put Seth MacFarlane on the map, something like a family guy or something like that. I don't know. Giggity! Uh, yeah, but <laughs> don't ask us why or how that's going to work or any of that stuff um, because we don't really know. Uh, but to be honest, between Disney buying Fox or the fact that they are renaming Fox's uh, television channel to New Fox, Ew. among other things, Ew. we've just kind of accepted that we're going to see a lot of weird news out of Fox for a while. Like... Fox Clear and Crystal Fox and probably like Diet Fox or Fox Zero, I don't know. Um, nothing with Fox News though because they did not buy that part. Uh, so, but you know, let's just let, let that all sink in for a moment. Um, and finally, while we're on the topic of Fox shows that are getting a second season, Fox has also revealed yesterday that their Marvel X-Men TV drama, The Gifted, has been renewed for an additional season, which is great because, you know, it, the first season's not even done airing yet. So, you know, for those unfamiliar, The Gifted is set in an uh, alternate universe where the X-Men had all but disappeared. 
uh, just when mutants needed them most, and tells the story of a couple who discover their children possess mutant powers and are forced to go on the run from hostile government, all the while joining up with an underground network of mutants to survive. You know, it's the same old story we've all seen before and before. Uh, it's a classic hero's journey. Uh, if you haven't yet checked it out, though, we recommend it because it is really, really good. <clears throat> So now, speaking of the Marvel Mutant Universe, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be doing uh, the game we call Truth or Nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and this time we'll be quizzing someone uh, to find out if the Marvel Mutants we read to them are real, true Marvel Mutants or made-up nonsense. Then later we'll be sharing your answers about uh, what you'd like to see them Animaniacs poke fun at and be giving away some awesome loot from the Loot Vault. So be sure to stick around. You have made it this far. Like me, you came up through the ranks, through hard work, and sheer determination. What you are transitioning into is unlike anything you have ever experienced before. We are sending you where other soldiers dare not tread. You will win. You will defeat the enemy. You will return, and you will do it all again tomorrow. Now, you are Spartans. Welcome to Fireteam Apollo. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Wes. He's hey. the brand manager now for Loot Gaming and Core, the Loot Crate, and a bunch of other stuff. He makes sure that we can afford to do things, mm -hmm. and I'm the one that makes all the fun stuff. So like we work he together sure a lot. We can. Yeah, mm -hmm. we argue a lot. It's fun, <laughs> but it's like a loving, weird relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but he's gonna play. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's gonna play Truth and Nonsense with us with Marvel. But first of all, it's Wes's birthday today. What? Happy That's birthday! True. Yeah, yeah. He's the birthday boy. It's real when you have a shirt, right? <laughs> I can't believe you own a shirt like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah my wife got it for okay, me. Okay, that's yeah, appropriate. Exactly. That makes sense. <laughs> I can't, I can't, Chris, make me move over. All right, so we're gonna play Marvel things with mutants. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna read this description to you, and you mm -hmm. tell me if they're an actual true Marvel mutant. Or it's that's nonsense and I'm just lying up my butt. I'm an X-Man's expert, by the way. You guys should all know that. Ah, oh, this is gonna be real rough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the first one is Evangeline Vange Whedon first appeared in Extreme X-Men issue number 21. Her abilities are uh, able to shapeshift into a dragon after coming in contact with blood. What? Um, I think that's crazy enough to actually be true. That's correct! Yes! That is true. Yes, yes. Blood, like not a blood dragon, but just a dragon after blood. It's yeah, so weird. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so this one is, his name is. I was hoping for like five Wolverine questions. Yeah, his name is, his name is Forearm. His real name is Marcus Tucker. He first appeared in New Mutants issue 86. His abilities are mutant with an extra set of arms. That's, that's it. No, there's no way. True! Ah! <laughs> Oh man. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I, I guess I'm forgetting that there's years and years of comics. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So many. Uh, okay. This one I can't is. Wait for the, for the forearms movie. Ah, he's like Goro. He's like exactly. Goro mutant. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is mutant twenty one ninety nine. Yep. His real name is Brad Banning. He first mm. appeared in X Force volume one issue nine. His abilities are uh, mutant. He lives in the future and possesses telekinetic abilities he can use to enhance his agility and strength to higher than human standards, including being able to propel himself through the air. True. False! That is nonsense. Oh man. But man, also, I bet ten thousand dollars on this. But it's close to true. There is a mutant known as Mutant 2099, mm. but real name is Chad Channing. Chris is creative enough to make it just Brad Banning. You know, letters are simple. Um, Wait, so what did I get wrong? Everything? It's all wrong. Chris, it's says, all made Chris added a hundred okay. years okay, to it. his name and changed the name by one letter. It is. Oh. <sighs> I know. So uh, it's fundamentally a mutant. Yeah. Okay. So this one's name is Gentle. Is his mutant name, and his name is <laughs> Nezo Abidemi. Yeah. He first appeared in X-Men Volume 2, issue number 23. He uh -huh. has the ability to increase his muscle mass at the expense of his own well-being. Mm. Has tattoos made of vibranium that prevents his powers from going too far. Mm. That all checks out. That's definitely true. Yes, it is. Yes! Ooh. Weirdest thing. He, so he can get so swole that he will just tear his skin off. What is a tattoo made of bright? Does he have like a lot of tattoos? With I, I imagine he's probably got like. Oh, so he doesn't have like, please shoot here, so where it <laughs> says go. like, like his ex girlfriend's. So like, name. Oh, he's got like he yeah. tattooed himself a Colossus skin, essentially. Oh, okay. That seems like a cool hack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is one named Firestorm. His real name is Jason Roosh. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from Marvel's X Force Volume Two, issues thirty, issue thirty four. His ability is to rearrange the molecular or particle structure of any substance into most anything else, including not just transmuting items to other materials, uh, but into different shapes. Uh, 
true. False. Oh, what part of it is false though? Well, the thing oh, is, oh, we made two of the letters swap instead no. of E A. It's A E. No. Oh, you uh, got me, guys. <laughs> Firestorm is actually a real hero, but he's from the DC universe, so he's not a mutant technically. Oh, come on. Ah. So Pr it's true. It's in it's A. Universe. Falsely, it's falsely true. Okay. Uh, and it <laughs> would not hold up in a court of law. <laughs> actually, that's DC. These are deep cuts. This might be my favorite. His name is Flashlight. <laughs> okay, great. Flashlight. Uh, Edmund Tomlinson. He first appeared in Marvel's Runaways Volume 1, Issue 16. He's a teenager with the ability to illuminate his body bright enough to cause temporary blindness and disorientation in his enemies. I thought this was going to be like, can Magneto control magnets or something? Can he? True. He controls magnetism. He does mm, control metal. Metal, right? Do they yeah. have to be magnetic metals? Yeah. See, that's, yeah, that, that would I don't be a know. Cool Maybe. Question. Anyway. Flashlight, true or false? Uh, flashlight. That's so true. Nope, nonsense. <laughs> like, totally nonsense? Is we got four more of these? Does, okay. Does his name sound like Flashlight? Am I allowed to say what I'm thinking? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this one's name is Bling! Yeah. Like the things rappers wear. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Real name this is, is Roxanne like real, Roxy Washington. Mm -hmm. First appeared in X Men Volume 2, Issue 171. Yeah. Abilities uh, the daughter of esteemed musician's daddy libido. Really? I can say libido? <laughs> uh, and sexy mother. Also, I can say sexy mother? And I can't say the cool thing. Yeah. Like flashlight. She, <laughs> she is capable of turning her body into diamond and firing projectiles made of diamond. Oh, that's true. I've actually seen that. Yes. In that's Cirque du that's the wrong Cirque du Soleil you're watching. Yeah. Uh, next is Long John. That's just underwear. <laughs> this is the type of pants. Yeah. First appeared in X Uncanny X-Men Volume 1, issue number 63. Mm -hmm. Abilities are right arm has the ability to transmute into various weapons, mm. and, and most often a hook or a sword. Um, actually, his name is Under John, and his arm is a pitchfork, so All that's right. totally well, false. That's, yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> and the second to last one, uh, Long Neck to go with Long John. Uh, real <laughs> name is William. Lives in the Savannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real name is True. William Hanover. First appeared in New X Men issue 140. Yeah. Uh, he has a very long neck. That's it. Is that really true? Yes. I'm no oh my god. <laughs> You start going down the list of powers and like, what if yeah, he had exactly. giraffe neck? I know, they really go into the bottom of the barrel. It's just like, like Stan Lee is just walking around the zoo being like, he's got a horse. You're a mutant face. now, <laughs> true believer. Yeah, exactly. uh, here's the final one. Yeah. Forget me not. Real name doesn't have or need one. Mm. Uh, even though, how you, okay. Uh, allegedly an X-Men Legacy issue number 300. The abilities, he is impossible to perceive or remember. You could have a full conversation with him, look away, Forget he even existed. While he's appeared officially in seven issues of X-Men, it's possible that he's been there since issue number one. You just never know about it. His, I'm adding in, his alternate name is Dr. Rufy. Wow, so he's basically like retcon the superhero. Yeah. Uh, true. Yes. Wow, wow. Basically the crazier that it is, sounded, yeah. the crazier it sounded, the more likely I Or the stupidest, the more yeah, stupid. Like, exactly. he's got a long neck. I guess that <laughs> is the thing we're it's doing. It's good enough. Ship it, ship it. They love the spider guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you for coming I, on. I think I did pretty well. I didn't keep track. Um, so, what do I win? That's, do I win anything? You get to go home right after this. Yes. Yep. That's my favorite thing. Exactly. That's my favorite thing. Uh, so, thank we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to uh, talk to you about, we're going to share with you the, um, uh, the top choices of what you want to see the Animaniacs Pub Fun at with the new uh, show coming out and giving away some loot from the loot vault. So we'll be right back, stick around. Cool. Hey, oh God, Wes is gone, he just disappeared. Uh, at the top of the show we asked uh, you what modern things you like to see the Animaniacs uh, make fun of when the show comes back, and we've got your answers right here. This time it's on a nice blue piece of paper. Mm. Uh, so the first one is from uh, Barry Cochran, I imagine. Andrew, your handwriting is atrocious. This is bad. Um, but he says, uh, Animaniacs, start a YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fully, ship it, get it, I just want it ship in my it. life, yeah. Um, God, okay, I just, I thought about all the great things I could do and I can't talk about it. Okay, uh, number two is from John McEwen, I imagine. Uh, Animaniacs do Star Wars, solid. Okay. Because there's been six Star Wars since they went off the air? Well, yeah, they'll, Hi, they'll, they'll be oh, six. six. Yeah, they'll six. be six by the time they come back, yeah. so that'll be great. Um, and number three is from Nick Alexander is uh, Make Fun of the Bachelor. 
which that's just easy. Like, we can, I mean, all the reality TV they can make fun of, right? Like, I will, I'm fine with Vanderpump Rules, because uh, that's my favorite. Please make fun of me in the chat about that. Uh, so if we read one of your answers, uh, one of our team will message you on Facebook sometime after the show today to get you your gift card to the Loop Vault. If we didn't, or you're watching this later on, uh, then on YouTube or Twitch, then uh, make sure to come back next Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific to join us on facebook.com slash lootcrate to have more chances at some free loot. It's gonna be great. Additionally, be sure to also check out and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash lootcrate to see our latest theme videos, unboxings, product reveals, and more. Uh, and finally, uh, was there any geek or gaming news this week that we didn't cover that you would like to have seen? You know, let us know in the comments so we can bring you guys more of the content you love. Please say you want this more of me. Uh, so with that said, I'm your host Mike Vitralia. Thanks for watching another episode of Looter News Live. Have a great weekend, you guys. Goodbye.